Hi everyone, Equalize here with Kate Bornstein, author, speaker, and just such an amazing, wonderful person who has been such a great help to so many people. And we're so grateful to have her here today. Thank you so much for being with us. My great pleasure. You do amazing work. Thank you. That means the world to us. Um, so there are some people who might be a little bit unfamiliar with your work. Um, you've had some great books out like Gender Outlaw, Hello Cruel World, uh, Alternatives to Suicide, um, My Gender Workbook and My New Gender Workbook. Um, can you tell us um, kind of a brief overview of your journey through all of that and, and what the other experiences you've had in your time as, as being the person that you are? That's kind of hard to condense. I mean, I'm, at this moment as we're shooting, uh, two weeks from now, I'm going to turn 67. So, to condense it all down, um, born male, assigned male at birth, never really worked for me, but I tried really hard to be a guy, to, to, to be a man, and uh, it just felt like I was lying. Um, so I went through, this was in the 80s, 1980s, I went through uh, a gender transition uh, and they told me I was a woman. So I said, okay, I am a woman, hear me roar. And for about six months I tried and I tried and it also felt like a lie. Uh, woman didn't work for me any better the man had. I like walking through the world as a woman. I like that. I like the cuteness. I like the kind of feminine strength I was able to come up with. But woman? No. So I finally said goodbye to being a man. Goodbye to being a woman. I'm simply neither. And I wrote a book about it called Gender Outlaw on men, women, and the rest of us. And that was a long time ago, and they still teach that fucker in colleges around the world. It's been translated into all kinds of languages. I'm proud of it. And the essence is you don't have to be any gender you don't want to be. You can be any gender you'd like to be, and you can even invent your own gender because there are so many more than two. Ta-da! That's so awesome to, to be able to find yourself and have that confidence within your own identity. And um, a lot of people also believe that it, it's just an ever-evolving thing as you consider journeying through life. Um, it, it's just really, really fascinating. Um, what we do at Equalize is focus on creating a safe space for LGBTQ people within the music scene, the music industry, on all levels. Um, with that in mind, um, sometimes people do have negative reactions or negative experiences or um, get called certain things or have somebody be very unkind to them. Um, do you have any tips on how to handle that, whether it's through conversation or just personally just handling the thought and the emotion and the reactions to that? It's scary if you're just sitting there at a concert and you're enjoying the hell out of it and let's say you're gay, or maybe you're not, but someone next to you or near you, or maybe even one of the musicians when you luckily got backstage, is going, oh, look at those fucking trannies over there, jeez, or look at that faggot dyke, and you're going, really? That's so 20th century. Um, I, I would hope that you have the strength to disapprove of that in whatever means you can. I'm not saying, 
oh no, don't say that word, because I'm, I'm not a big fan of policing words, but it's the attitude behind the word. Um, Not everybody's taught about homophobia, transphobia, that, you know, hey, you're talking about human beings here, human beings who are just like you at the very core of their being, except, frankly, they have more fun with sex than you do. Uh, that's really the big difference. Uh, so if you can kind of keep that in mind, and when you talk about, you know, faggots and dykes and trannies, I wouldn't go using those words. Not, not a good idea. And when you hear those words, unless they're obviously being said in love and camaraderie, uh, take a moment to disapprove. Take a moment to say, excuse me, did I hear you right? And be prepared for, what do you mean? And you go, you know, I heard that word and I use whatever word you want, but you have something about gay people or something about trans people and engage them on a level and try to get to close to the bottom as you can without getting yourself kicked out or, or punched in the face. Be careful of that part, please. Um, that's doing your bit. That's doing your bit for bringing more compassion into the world. Because who doesn't want more of that? Everybody wants more of that. It's really hard to bring compassion into a volatile situation. Like if someone's really gone off and they're, they're storming, you know, get out of their way. Just maybe not your battle. But the offhanded remark, call people on it. That would be a very good thing to do. That's really great advice to, to just do what you feel is right, to speak up and stand and take power of who you are at that moment and not allow things to have that power. Um, sometimes those words affect us deeply and sometimes it takes a heavier toll on some people than other. Um, in your book, Hello, cruel world, you know, the alternatives to suicide, that book has had such a huge impact upon so many people. Um, do you have any words or advice as to handling those situations or when you have those thoughts or feelings or just a moment of hopelessness to kind of, kind of help you carry on and give life another chance? I wrote this book called Hello Cruel World, 101 Alternatives to Suicide for Teens, Freaks, and Other Outlaws. Those are my very favorite people. And these are the people who are most suicidal in the world. Me, one of them. Uh, six moments of, yeah, I think I'm gonna kill myself. It wasn't like that, but yeah, uh, never attempted it that I remember. Although I have strange scars on my wrists that I got from someplace. Um, yeah, we, we get to a point where life doesn't seem worth living. And the only advice I can give you, you don't have to buy the book if you could remember this. Please do whatever it takes to make your life more worth living. Period. Full stop. Do whatever it takes. Can be illegal, can be immoral, can be self-destructive. Whatever. Uh, all those 101 alternatives, they, they, they fall in that, mostly in that area. The only rule that makes that kind of blanket permission work is don't be mean. Duh. If you're not being mean, you can do whatever you want in the whole world. Anything, anything, anything. Now, what if it's self-destructive? Like, 
I've been a cutter most of my life. I've been anorexic most of my life. These are very self-destructive, uh, harmful, deadly uh, alternatives to suicide, if you will. But they kept me alive. And if that's what's going to keep you alive, I'm sorry, you're going to have a hard life until you can deal with that. But go ahead and do that. Drugs? Fine. If it comes down with drugs or kill yourself, do the fucking drugs. Get off them as soon as you can because really they make you stupid. Really dumb. Uh, I'm not saying that you should make your life great. That's mostly impossible for people to do. You might wake up one morning and go, whoa, I've got a great life, but mm, making it great from one moment to the next is not going to happen. But making it better, we can always do. Always. You can make your life more worth living. Keep that phrase in mind. Now, there's a big problem when some of the fun things you want to do, maybe with sex, uh, maybe with gender, uh, they can lend you up in hell. It's a deal I made with the devil. Truly, truly. Um, don't worry about me ending up in hell and doing your time for you. I'm into BDSM. Mostly M. I'm a big time masochist. I love that shit. So, I will have a lovely time in hell if that's the case, and you have a great opportunity to make your life more worth living. Okay? Now, what if someone comes after you and her starts hurling hate words at you? Whew. Well, you can run. There's no shame in that. Truly, people like to say that's a shameful thing to do. Bullshit. You stay alive, my darling. You stay alive for another day. Someone's hurling those terms at you, you can get triggered. You can get triggered into a terrible state of fear, maybe rage. Uh, certainly, your emotions take over and your rational mind isn't really working that well. The best thing to do when you're triggered like that, best thing to do is take a moment and say, I am triggered. All you have to do, first step, I am triggered. That immediately puts you outside of not only the triggering action, but also the triggering reaction. You become more of an observer, more of a witness, and less of a, an effect, a shivering effect of this thing. So. I have been triggered. Take a deep breath. I can give in to this triggered behavior or I can do something about it. That's going to help you, I promise. Those are extremely powerful, incredible words and thank you for that. Um, just to wrap it up, um, so what's next for, for Auntie Kate? What's, what's in the future? What's on the horizon for our, our, our dear Auntie? And now that I'm an elder in the LGBTQIA, etc. world, um, I want to write some last words of advice. I think that's, that's what you do when you're really old and about to go. Uh, so I'm, I'm working on a new book and the working title of it is kind of snarky. I don't know if I'll keep it, but what it is right now is trans just for the fun of it. Because a lot of people are taking transgender so deadly seriously. I'm trying to remind people there's a great deal of joy to be had and living the gender you've always wanted to live. And that doesn't mean man or woman, necessarily. There's all kinds of shades of men and shades of women and shades of blends that you get to be. You can explore those. But remember, do it for the joy.
It's an old Buddhist saying that I'm very fond of. All roads in life lead nowhere. <laughs> so you might as well choose the road that has the most heart and is the most fun. Please. Okay, I love you. Bye-bye.